Well, I want to apologize because this review is late. And that is my fault. I was waiting for episode 6 to become dubbed. And for some fucking reason, wasn't. And I'm kind of sad because I do like hearing them uh, in dub. But I am okay watching it sub. Like, I genuinely am enjoying it. Both, both voices are pretty good. I am not going to compare the two. That is not what this is. I'm just going to say, yeah, that kind of delayed me. And unfortunately, I'm basically playing catch up. But that's fine, because, I mean, catch up is what I have to do. But for now, I will like to present episodes 5 and 6. This episode has a lot more to do with a side mission that is important. So it's not necessarily filler in the sense that we're not following the knight and his people. Harley and the crew already at the beginning of the episode, they get like their bombs reset and all right as they're about to get well blown the hell up. So we know that now this has been 72 hours since they've arrived to this new world. So it kind of gives us more or less a time frame. With them assisting the knights, and then eventually during a nice combat fight against, well, the enemy. It, it's kind of funny just watching Deadshot completely run out of ammo. And that's basically the big problem that leads into the episode. That Deadshot, as well as Harley and Peacemaker, have the issue with ammo. They're fighting with, well, Harley can fight with whatever the hell she feels like. Peacemaker can somewhat fight with his fists and stuff, but he's more gun proficient, same as Deadshot. So once they start running out of ammo, as well as Flint, the secret agent, that causes a problem. So they leave off for their own little journey in order to get this ammo because they need to restock on supplies. For the most part, I enjoy the conversations between the crew King Shark's honestly funny. Like, genuinely in this episode, he, he's kind of giving me a bit of a chuckle here and there. So. <laughs> he definitely has my attention. But before they go on this big journey, I did want to talk about Harley Quinn and her group speaking with the Ogres and how they are all villains, really. The Ogres, honestly, are kind of tamed. They're pretty much chill for the so-called bad guy and yeah the only reason they're chill is because although they're forced to fight well the with the enemy that they would presume the ones that locked them up they just gave them booze and free food and it's like yep you can have this area if you help us win so it's like they're they're henchmen essentially they don't really seek that much though i like the conversations that honestly these guys are chill harley quinn and the suicide squad they're pretty chill as well they have their own wackiness and their own uh, crazy sides, but they're all pretty chill in reality, which is kind of funny in, gr in the grand scheme of things, considering that Harley Quinn is a villain. She follows the Joker. Clayface, I, since he's an actor in this one, I'm kind of curious what kind of villain he is or was. Peacemaker, um, I mean, extremist peacemaker. Deadshot, obviously assassin. Not really much into the villain category, more just a guns for hire person with the ability to kind of match a Batman in certain things. And King Shark, which is just an animal with sentient ability to speak. Not really like super evil villains like say Lex Luthor, the Joker, Sinestro, and so on and so forth. Not like super high tier unredeemable villains. So yeah, I kind of like this conversation about how they're kind of chill with each other, but they won't bow down. They're still all villains. Granted though, the conversation of the fucking frying pan does come back into play later on, which I'll get to that. But the group does encounter the drag a dragon that's sitting on top of the ship made a nest of itself. And yeah, they all give Flint shit for it because I mean, how the hell do you let a dragon sit on top of the ship that they need to get into. So yeah, everyone works together and I'm kind of enjoying it. Like yeah, Deadshot, Peacemaker to some degree and 
Flint, like Peacemaker and Flint make a straight shot into trying to get into the ship. Obviously, Deadshot, he got a bullet, so he has one shot to make a count. And everyone else has to kind of do whatever they can. Though I think Clayface might be a bit broken. Like, I think King Shark is the strongest, if the two were to fight. However, the abilities that Clayface can do here feels a bit absurd, and I love it. But there's something that completely caught me the fuck off guard, and it's just Harley Quinn with the ever-living fuck of a frying pan turning super fucking big that I don't even know. It, it just caught me so off guard. I feel like Harley is just bending the laws of physics at this point. That's her ability. Her wackiness is more or less whatever the hell she feels like making in, I guess. But I did like seeing all of them working together to face the dragon and that, yeah, they're struggling. Like, these creatures are pretty fucking strong. And I like seeing that, yeah, they're, they're not still able to just one of them be able to fight against the dragon on their own. No, they all need to work together. And that's what I like. It feels like the Suicide Squad is working as a team. They do manage to beat it once Peacemaker grabs the dragon's attention by obviously threatening the egg. Flint finds the phone, which is going to be relevant a little bit later in this review. Harley Quinn comes in and is able to find the rocket launcher, tosses it at Deadshot. Everyone else works together to keep the dragon more or less distracted. Though it, w it is funny on two separate occasions with King Shark. One, he gets, well, captured in a sense. And second, after the dragon have fired a fireball, he's on fire and just running around like a cartoon character, which I personally found it funny. So, you know, it, it, it was pretty funny. But Deadshot grabbing the rocket launcher and firing it was pretty badass. I gotta give it that. And yeah, the dragon was defeated. He was, it was still on fire. So, and then it fell off into a cliff. And the animation's kind of weird but enjoyable i think that's the best way to phrase it so anyway we do have flint communicating with amanda waller it's been a while since we've even heard, heard from her and yeah they're basically trying to get all communications and that the previous group had sided with the enemy essentially so amanda waller's orders is to eliminate them so yeah now i'm kind of curious what made them defect so, with the successful mission of having finally gotten new ammunition for, obviously, to get be able to continue fighting, especially more for Deadshot, Peacemaker, and Flint, the problem, and for Harley Quinn, even though I feel like Harley Quinn doesn't necessarily need a gun. And then, as it all seems like it's going all well, they arrive to where the ogres were, and the whole lands are just completely in flames with an interesting villain, the Thinker, facing, looking like a face-off against an unknown person. And, well, that's how the episode ends. Overall, it was a pretty fun episode. I mean, yeah, side mission to, that's really an important mission. It's, it's still there, but them fighting a dragon was still pretty fucking cool. I still find it weird whenever Clayface says Isekai. It's like, I don't know. I, I, I just feel, it feels so weird. But I'll get used to it at some point. But for sure, a 9 out of 10. Now let's move on to the next episode. So where we left off? In a fucking massacre. Because all of these ogres who were pretty chill in the last episode got murked. And that genuinely sucks. Because... You can see in the last episode, they were all quite getting along. Yes, they won't let anyone else control them, per se. They're still villains, but they really did care for each other. And they respected one another. So, clearly, Harley being the more expressive of the group, would be the one to react with the most anger, justifiably. And, interestingly enough, we have the elves. They... <laughs> They are, I've never seen just how much of a massacre these guys are going to get. Which, by the way, I think I, I forgot to mention, Harley Quinn has a dragon now. She's now the mama of the dragon in the last episode. So now this moves in with her giving the dragon 
the little baby dragon to our agent and yeah this essentially causes a fight to break out which i mean they were showing a lot i've never seen peacemaker this fucking mad which is impressive unfortunately this is probably one of the episodes where you have the threat appear and kick their ass kick the protagonist ass and i guess in this case kick the protagonist's asses and i feel bad for them because i feel like we've gone enough to where they are a team somewhat of a team they're still kind of doing their own thing they're not doing like combos uh, at this point like too many combos but yeah they get all completely outflanked by the thinker and unfortunately even with like say dead shot skills harley quinn's tenacity and determination as well as like peacemaker and his desire for peace like these guys they do have a little team up with peacemaker throwing a few bombs and deadshot firing it so it was a pretty cool like little team up and harley quinn coming in for an attack however unfortunately it does seem like the thinker had something planned because he just had a shield and then whoever the hell is this lady kind of just is putting them in a bad position and yeah even if uh, with clayface's assistance like they had no chance king shark got completely pushed away like used as a rag doll unfortunately and had to fight an underwater creature which is obviously more on king shark's territory and we have obviously deadshot and peacemaker attempting to work together but these elves really did uh, push them all back and interestingly enough what thinker did was he essentially messed with their minds we have clayface with his old acting thing being laughed at so motivation to become a villain we have deadshot and his daughter which is an interesting show of events peacemaker with all the dead bodies more or less the guilt that comes in through all the things he's done so and then harley quinn being one of the remaining ones who didn't get affected by the ability and yeah it it does seem like no matter what harley quinn does like she is a she is a skilled fighter that is something that cannot be taken away or taken away by from her unfortunately these threat the thinker and his associate are just way too much for her so yeah she gets beaten like all of the suicide squad the guys unfortunately got like their worst uh, fears kind of hit them so they're mentally attacked while harley quinn is physically attacked hmm. kind of weird thing to put it like that and yeah the only way they were saved was because of uh, flint right here essentially there's still the bomb on the neck of the thinker he basically forced them to back down because it's like more or less playing it, even if it if i recall i thought they had the bombs out i'm not sure if they do or maybe some of them do and some of them don't but this if it's a bluff or not it worked because the thinker not really wanting to take a chance because that bomb starts going off yeah he's gonna die so he leaves and he leaves with his associate and yeah unfortunately everyone got their asses whooped and this was probably one of the few times that was a complete catastrophe and yeah we go to the war room we have the queen being a bitch because she basically tells everyone why is everyone sad we just lost a bunch of inmates who gives a shit about them and it kind of shows how i think the way to phrase it would be it's casualties of war and even then it's not even her, their people it's just people that they forced into assisting them so prisoners so it's not the humans that are dying it's other races that are fighting for them that are dying and the queen kind of views it as well no one of her people died it'd be a different story if the knights suddenly all start going down because that's their people their army but these weren't that so it didn't really matter in the grand scheme of things however 
but failure is still failure, and she does want the Suicide Squad dead. Obviously, the princess is not happy with that, and the famous knight actually is not okay with that either. He frees them and essentially saves them from going to be executed. Which, I mean, that's also conveyed a lot more when the princess and the famous knight speak. Like, they've grown, the dude has grown attached to them in the sense that they're now brothers of war because they've fought side by side. Yeah, he gets annoyed of their antics and they probably get annoyed of him, but they now have an established relationship. And that essentially was enough to kind of have him see them as allies and may, if friends is stretching it, acquaintances. And some acquaintances are worth assisting. So yeah, he saves them and he basically tells them, yep, here you go, get another chance. And we get a flashback, an interesting flashback in, in regards to the princess. This flashback seems to have that this group of friends broke because she had mentioned about soldiers coming in and one of the kids must have gone to investigate and probably gotten killed, which caused the other to kind of just hate her because she's royalty and all of this is happening. And yeah, even the queen is berating her and I genuinely feel for the princess. So she feels like this is a possible chance to kind of redeem herself by saving these uh, people, the Suicide Squad. And obviously they are on their route to face the Thinker. Meanwhile, he basically goes into the portal or at least is outside of it and he's not gonna wanna be disturbed. He saw through their minds and knows, yeah, this is the portal to go back home. So essentially we have the thinker is setting something up and I'm kind of curious what the hell is he up to overall this was a pretty damn good episode for the essentially the quality look I know people have said that yeah Suicide Squad is not a necessary anime and to some degree I can see it because if you place like different kind of characters and slightly adjusted the story it could somewhat be the same. However, I like to make a counterpoint and say that it feels like the characters are given a little more to do. Peacemaker, definitely, we're showing signs of something that could be going on with him. I like the whole Clayface actor side. I think as much as I hate his references to a lot of things, especially Isekai stuff, I can somewhat say that maybe we might see an interesting side of him because Clayface is not really that much I've seen in terms of media. And then Harley Quinn and Deadshot, like the two main ones. Deadshot, it's obviously about the daughter, but I wanna know what kind of dyna dynamic the daughter and Deadshot have. Like, does the daughter hate him or does she view him in some different way? I'm kind of curious. And Harley Quinn, I think the biggest thing about this Harley Quinn is that she's still bad shit crazy for the Joker. But I'm kind of curious if being in a different world, like away from him, and generally being able to build her own path might bring something different to the table. I'm kind of curious. Like, I'm more of curiosity while I continue watching these and kind of reviewing and giving, like, recaps of what's going on. But my thoughts are, it, it's pretty interesting. I, I mean, maybe the season finale might be bad. Maybe it might be good. I don't know. But... I am willing to give this still a chance because, I mean, I've gone this far. I might as well continue, right? But overall, it was a pretty 9 out of 10 episode.